Yeah, well, welcome, everyone. Um, thanks for joining this afternoon. Uh, we're going to talk about the performance of uh, VM versus containerized Cloud Foundry. Uh, I'm Jeff Hobbs, uh, Director of Engineering at SUSE, and uh, Vlad is uh, one of our system architects. Okay. So what are we comparing? We're looking at a two, two standard installations uh, of CF deployment. Uh, one is the CF deployment of, of Bosch on GCP, so Google Compute Platform, uh, the VM-based one. And then there is the standard Helm installation of SUSE Cloud Foundry, which is the containerized Cloud Foundry on Google uh, Kubernetes. So you're really looking at the, the boss and the uh, boss, Bosch and Fissile approach, a word I'll try and mix together too many times. So what are we doing? What's our goal? We're really trying to validate. Um, obviously, there was, the, it, you might have seen a lot of talks about containerizing Cloud Foundry. And there's all the presumptions that, hey, everything from the user experience doesn't change at all, and, and then it's all going to be great from the operator experience. But there's a lot of non-functional requirements in software. One of those big important ones is performance. Um, did, it, does, did, did it get a lot worse? Did it actually get a lot better? Did it get a little better? What's going on? So um, we're not really looking at a, at, a, at a better or worse, but just to make sure that there weren't any critical flaws. Um, and, you know, because we've gone through exercises like this before and realized, you know, oops, oh, we added two or three hops in here and, and that makes things worse. So it is, it is addressing one of those non-functional requirements in software. Uh, the next is what can we improve? What learnings can we take away from this? And, uh, so we'll go into the methodology, and here I'll pass off to Vlad, and we'll, he'll talk exactly what the environments were and the tests that were run. All right. Okay, so first, uh, about the environments, uh, we had uh, two VM-based environments and two container environments. Uh, we're going to split these up into minimal and heavy environments. Uh, I'm going to explain exactly uh, how much they cost, uh, how many CPUs they had, and so on. So we wanted to see, okay, if we take the minimal uh, Bosch deployment as uh, referenced by CF deployment, uh, what can we get out of that? If we deploy something at the same cost uh, in the container world, what do we get out of that? So um, this is how a minimal environment uh, would look like for, uh, for Bosch, let's say. So we have three VM flavors for a Bosch deployment. Uh, you need tiny VMs, one CPU, one memory, uh, 3.775 gigs of memory, small with two, two CPUs, uh, and small high memory with four CPUs and respective memory. Uh, this is the cost for each of those uh, types of VMs. And in total, for the minimal deployment that you can currently do with CF deployment on GCP, uh, you reach an estimated cost of about uh, $780 uh, per month. Uh, you get 22 CPUs out of it and 93.5 gigs of memory. So that's one of the environments. Its counterpart in the fissile world, so uh, in GKE, you can provision nodes that uh, uh, become the workers of your Kubernetes cluster. Um, we used um, the small uh, flavor and uh, because it's a homogeneous environment, we just have one type of VM in our, uh, in our cluster. Uh, we tried to estimate so that we get roughly the same cost, but so for our environment, we are a bit below. Um, there's a small hiccup here. I think we should have used a small high memory. That would have given us uh, a better match with the CPU and memory counts. Uh, we kind of take a hit, so the container, containerized approach takes a, a bit of a performance hit here because it has less memory and less CPU uh, at roughly the same cost. So anyway, uh, this is the minimal, and then we have the heavy one. So uh, we wanted to push uh, the, the minimal environments to the brink where they couldn't accept more applications. And then uh, after running those tests and see how, how it performs, Let's just uh, 
create more space, and then see what happens when everything is okay and, we, and when we don't run out of resources. So in this case, um, you essentially add five more cells to the Bosch deployment, uh, which means uh, four more uh, small high memories. So you get a ton more memory. You also add some uh, routers and some APIs, so you end up with a, a much beefier uh, system. It'll cost you around $1,500 uh, a month, um, but it'll, it'll, uh, it'll accept more uh, applications. Again, uh, for the fissile-based environment, so for the containerized one, uh, there's a homogenous environment. We use 19 small VM types. Um, that gives you 142 gigs of RAM and 38 CPUs. Again, should have used small high memory. We would have gotten around the same cost, but uh, a much better uh, approximation with memory. So uh, this is what we're running on. Yeah, so just to you know, clarify, what we were doing here was trying to create cost equivalent systems and then see in a cost equivalency what kind of performance we were getting. Um, the, there uh, is, as well, you know, we could be pushing and doing all the small high memory. The, it would look a little different, but we're not targeting that. We have a couple of slides at the end for if you did want to do that, what your results yeah. might be. Yeah. So what do we get? Uh, oh, one, one more thing. How, how uh, do the tests look like? So we use the Locus framework. It's a Python-based framework for writing uh, agents that do things. And then uh, it'll measure how, uh, how, how the requests happen, and you'll get reports uh, at the end. Um, our agents that uh, do Cloud Foundry things can, uh, can perform these types of actions. They can push the Dora application. They can make requests to uh, random applications. So they look at the available applications that have been deployed. They try to make a request, see if that succeeds or not. They can delete a random application. They can also call the stress endpoint of, uh, of an app. So the Dora application, uh, if you're familiar with it, in the Cloud Foundry acceptance tests, there's this uh, Dora application that has a bunch of endpoints that you can use to trigger a behavior. Uh, one of those is a stress behavior, uh, which essentially would start eating CPU and, and make IO, um, uh, make, uh, Intensive IO, IO calls, essentially acting like a like a bad app, like a like a bad agent, like uh, either a bad application or a, or a malicious agent. So sometimes these tests will actually call the stress system, uh, the stress endpoint, simulating a, a bad agent in the uh, in the cloud, and then uh, listing applications. The numbers that you see in parentheses are the weight of that action. So it's uh, 50 times more likely to make a request to an app than it is to push an app. So we run 20 of these agents across five hours and, and see what happens. And of course, it's much less likely to delete a, an app because we want to build up. We don't want to keep uh, churning and, and, and uh, not reaching the limit of our cluster. We actually want to push it to the brink. And of course, it's much less uh, likely to, to actually uh, get a bad actor but that happens as well. So when, when one, once that happens, essentially, you kind of uh, one of your CPUs is uh, is uh, is running 100% on on uh, on whatever uh, that uh, stress test does. Okay. So results. Uh, we're going to go through some charts, and I'm going to try to explain uh, what they mean and what we what we we're trying to learn from them. So first, uh, pushing applications in the minimal environment. Uh, success versus failure. So uh, in the green here, we have uh, how many apps were successfully pushed by the fissile environment. With blue, we see uh, the Bosch, how many successful apps were pushed uh, using uh, the Bosch environment. Red is failure for Bosch, and uh, orange is failure for, for fissile. What you want to see when uh, you have sufficient space is that uh, failures are zero or nil. Um, you'll see that in the large, in the heavy uh, tests. We never reach the capacity of that cloud, so uh, these will be zero. You, you never want to see errors here. So what do we see? Um, how can you interpret this? Well, uh, using the same amount of money, it was like 700 bucks, we can push many more apps in the 
fissile-based deployment. So it'll take more applications because you can pack more in uh, given that it's a homogeneous environment and you run cells on, on each, of the, each of the nodes that make up your cluster. And obviously there are fewer errors because you, you reach capacity later. So you push more and more applications and you reach capacity later and uh, yeah. Uh, pushing application duration. So how long does it take to push an app on each of these uh, environments? Uh, you don't want to see a large difference here. Um, in here we do see that the, the Bosch one on average takes a bit longer for the minimal environment. Uh, and it goes up as the cluster rem uh, runs out of resources. And we see it uh, for the fissile one, it also runs out of resources and um, kind of levels off here. Um, but the difference is not that large. So you, you see the, here the, we have 50 seconds uh, here and 55 seconds here. So uh, not, not that big of a difference. And then application requests. Uh, how long does it take to send a request to, uh, to the application and, and get a response back? And uh, here it's, it's very similar. Oops. Oh, where am I? Uh, yeah. Uh, here it's very similar. There's little difference. Um, the fissile one is a bit faster. Um, I, I don't know exactly why. In this case, uh, it's a bit faster. It's maybe something that we should investigate. And um, maybe the uh, CF deployment um, topology can change a bit, or maybe well, we can. We have the, su the, the supposition is that GKE is just operating straight bare metal. So you're just taking one layer of virtualization out and Could be. getting a little advantage. OK, so these were the charts for the minimal deployment. What, what we can learn from it is there is no real difference when it comes to application requests. So the networking part uh, seems to be the same. You're not taking a hit by doing containers and containers. Um, you do get a benefit of application density. You can push more into, um, uh, and get more out of your cluster. So for the same amount of money, you could run uh, more applications. OK, so this is the heavy environment. In this case, we have much more space. Uh, the cluster doesn't run out of resources, so you can, you can push many more apps. So everything is, uh, is running OK. In this case, we see that the Bosch uh, VM-based one was able to push a, a few more applications than the, than the Fissile-based one. There are no errors for any of these, which is great. So you can keep pushing apps. They're both stable. Uh, they, uh, they both. Um, uh, allow the developer to, 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 to run their applications without, uh, without error. So that's great. Um, how long does it take to push an app? So here we see that um, you want this number to be lower. Uh, in the case of Bosch, uh, when we added resources, uh, the time to push uh, went, went down a lot, and the average dropped. Uh, for Fissile, it kind of stayed this, the same as the, as the minimal test. Um, we think that this is because of our build packs. The build packs we ship, we ship with uh, SCF have uh, bits for uh, more stacks. Uh, we have OpenSUSE 42 and SLEE. So the build packs are bigger. So they might generate more traffic. So it, it might take longer to, um, uh, to push these applications. It could also be that we're not doing as much caching because we have uh, uh, online build packs. So. Uh, it, it's probably some, some of, one of these. So it's something that we learned and uh, we're going to take a look at. So <coughs> this also makes sense because <coughs> if we push applications a, a bit slower, it makes sense that uh, Bosch gates, gains an advantage here in how many applications you can push uh, inside five hours. So a bit of advantage there. And finally, uh, the uh, application request uh, duration. This one is basically the same. You, you can't see any difference um, for Bosch and Fissile, which is great. I mean, at the end, I think this one uh, is what we were mostly scared about. So once you push your application, you're not going to push uh, one app every 10 seconds uh, forever. Uh, but you are going to get requests, uh, a lot of requests uh, for your applications. And uh, this is what matters, uh, that we don't see discrepancies here. And the fact that we run with, uh, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, the Fissile deployment with Helm uh, was done with load balancers 
and the VM-based one was done with load balancers as well on GKE. So as you probably know, in Kubernetes, we also have services. There's a, an extra network that's, uh, that's available there. We were, of course, everyone was afraid that uh, that might uh, make us uh, lose some time, but uh, we don't, so that's great. <coughs> okay, so we learned that uh, uh, we don't seem to have made any uh, huge errors when containerizing Cloud Foundry. We are, after all, running the exact same bits. That's why we're, um, we're certified by the foundation. So the exact same bits that are running in uh, VMs are running in containers as well. Um, <clears throat> the infrastructure that Kubernetes has doesn't slow down application requests. Um, we do have uh, to learn about these differences. I think um, the VM uh, team, so the CF deployment team, could uh, take a look at these maybe and think about how, uh, uh, how to reduce that initial footprint that Bosch VMs, uh, th that a VM deployment brings, because uh, uh, there, there's, there's so many resources lost uh, when you just start with uh, 15 VMs. Uh, you spend a lot of money and um, you can't push uh, a lot of apps, really. And of course, we can look at the, those, uh, uh, at, at the reason why uh, push takes a bit longer with FISL. So, uh, so what's next for these? Uh, we want to add more test scenarios, like uh, binding to applications, uh, using services that, uh, uh, using applications that use services, uh, things like that. Uh, we want to add these performance tests as, as part of our pipeline. So when we release SCF, we run it through a, a whole battery of tests, including CATs, BRATs. Uh, we have our own set of uh, acceptance tests. Uh, we want to add these performance tests and grab a snapshot of the data each time we release. And then, of course, we want to investigate all these tiny discrepancies that we saw. Um, You've probably heard a lot about containerization and Irene. Um, so for containerization, uh, with regard to performance, you have to think about uh, adoption of CF deployment. Uh, we want to be able to deploy um, our, uh, our, cloud, our containerized Cloud Foundry the same way that uh, the VM-based one is deployed, uh, have the same composition of, of roles, be able to manage, uh, to manage it using a cube operator, which means we won't have Monit anymore. Uh, we'll, we'll further reduce the amount of, of things that run in order to, to have a CF deployment. So the footprint that we'll have uh, will be even smaller. Yeah, one of the aspects of the containerization is, 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 again, we are seeking to have a certified implementation. There are some limitations in that in the containerization or going beyond containerization, cubification. And this is part of the ongoing conversation that we're having in terms of, well, if we're not thinking only in terms of VMs anymore, how else could we refactor and gain further efficiencies? Um, uh, the operator is a big piece of that. And an even bigger piece is uh, Irene. Irene. Um, so uh, competing with, the, uh, with Jules and Jules and Irene above, but uh, one note, so all of these numbers are done, again, as we mentioned, with Diego and the container and container approach. Irene is pure CF push to Kubernetes scheduling. So you remove Diego, uh, remove all of the extra stuff that Diego adds, and rely purely on Kubernetes for your scheduling. It would go right into a namespace uh, next to your, your other apps. This also would improve general efficiency. You don't have to worry about how many Diego's do I have. You're really only thinking at the platform layer of how much space is my Kubernetes platform have. Um, I wanted to add one more thing to this aspect. Um, we do have some control now of how we optimize uh, the topology when you deploy to Kubernetes. A good example is uh, anti-affinity rules between routers and cells. We noticed that if they would be co-located, so if the same Kubernetes node were to run your router and your cell, performance would drop uh, drastically because the router needs uh, a lot of CPU and your app might compete with that and then uh, it just gets slowed down a lot. 
So we can do that, but with the cube operator, we might get even better at it, and we might be able to share that knowledge with, uh, uh, with CF deployment. So uh, that's, that's going to be pretty great. OK, so per Jeff's request, we have a bonus uh, round of slides. Uh, what if you wanted to run the minimal, uh, uh, minimal SCF? So we looked at the minimal Bosch. It takes uh, uh, like 15 VMs or something. But what if I wanted to run a, a very small footprint of SCF? What does that look like, and how does that compare to the minimal Bosch? So uh, what we usually do when we deploy SCF uh, minimally is we have around 20 gigs of RAM. So that means uh, three small, uh, small VMs here. You get about 22 gigs of memory, and it has a cost of $247 uh, a month, approximately. So what does that bring you? So again, we see the chart, uh, success versus failure for apps. Uh, you see that Bosch does uh, allow more applications in, but remember, it's uh, also three times as expensive. And uh, we have successes for Fissile. So you, you see, you can push about 80, I think it was 83 applications. Uh, each Dora app takes, uh, uh, is set to, to use uh, 256 uh, megs of memory. So in this case, uh, you can run 83, and Bosch can run uh, 120. But you paid a lot more for the Bosch one. So it kind of turns out that uh, you would be paying 6 bucks an app in the Bosch case, and about 3 bucks an app for, uh, for the Fissile case. Of course, if you pack all of your applications into the smallest uh, environment possible. Uh, again, uh, average duration, uh, Fissile. Uh, gets warm and they kind of, uh, it, it's similar. Uh, you get like uh, an average of uh, 80 seconds uh, to push an application with the Fissile one versus uh, about 60, 50, 60 seconds uh, for the Bosch one. And again, the application request is uh, virtually the same. There, there's almost no difference. Fissile one takes just a bit longer uh, because we run in such a more constrained environment. But yeah. Um, you can get started more quickly, and this is a much affordable uh, number, I think, uh, uh, if you look at it, uh, to, to get started with a, CF de uh, with a CF deployment. Yeah, and another thing that we're taking away from all these tests, you saw that we're using, it's actually most easy to set up in a Kubernetes environment to use a homogenous. Uh, we chosen small, we didn't choose small high memory, we think, we didn't test, but we think that that wouldn't give us a, the proper uh, vCPU to memory ratio, or rather there'd be too few. Um, you gotta have a ton of memory and <coughs> the CPU. We would actually like to test that and see what the real impact is. Um, you know, all of this part is that we, we do this and then recommend reference architectures. We've been recommending kind of about this, uh, you know, one to four ratio and to, to move to something different, uh, we'd have to see what the real impact is. So that's another takeaway for us. Because if you did that, you know, we could have had just one uh, small high memory. I could have cut another 33% off of this cost, um, but I'm not quite sure what the, uh, the app duration. Mm -hmm. And now I have to approve another couple thousand dollars worth of uh, time online for Vlad to figure this out. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, a bottom line is that uh, if, you, if you were ever worried that um, a containerized approach was not as stable or is not, a, not as performant, uh, you don't have to worry. It turns out it is. Uh, it's stable, it'll save you money, so uh, yeah, we think it's a, it's a good choice. And that's and it. That's it, yep. Yeah. Take some questions. I guess I'll make an observation. So, does it mean that containers over containers over containers doesn't matter? We, we, there was a lot of question about that. Uh, you know, one, you're adding in some extra with just Kubernetes itself, ingress controllers and all this, and then container and container on the back end. And um, the answer is no, apparently yeah. not. I think, so you are sharing the kernel. It's not like you're, you're, you're running VMs and VMs. That would be a terrible idea. But with the containers and containers, you are using the same kernel of the host. Now, if you were doing some math, calculations, I don't know, you're computing pi for some reason, 
you might find that there's a difference there, maybe. But that's not the correct test for this level. Yeah, so for our purposes, for web application, I don't think it matters. Do you intend to have different workloads to try instead of just DOA? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely. So and and uh, uh, more frameworks. So Dora is Ruby, by the way, uh, but we want to push uh, different apps too and, and exercise all of the build packs. Cool. Yeah. Any questions? I can't believe there's any question. No questions. I, I have a question too, but yeah, <laughs> go for it. So was the Bosch deployment using uh, online build packs as well? Um, no, no, uh, the, no. The default no, is so. the built-in ones now. Okay. So my question is more. <coughs> no, Paul. Is more from a scientist perspective. I mean, I, I know you brushed up on the methodology and everything. The key question is: Can somebody else reproduce this? Or you have enough information that people can go and try it, and of course try it on GKE and or different other places. My goal was have a Docker image, point it to a Cloud Foundry cluster, and then it spits out these charts for you. So that's uh, I'm, I'm almost there. Yeah, almost there. Uh, so it's going to be open source, and you'll just be able to run the image, uh, point it, and then it'll spit out these uh, these uh, charts for you. Okay. Cool. Thank yeah. you. No other questions? Okay, go run your Cloud Foundry on containers. <laughs> it seems like, oh, if you do, that's not a problem. Thank you, Vlad and Jeff. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone.